So after the theoretical derivation, so now we do an example of the impulse invariance method. So remember, so if we had our our transfer function HP and we run this here too and we have done a partial fraction expansion of our function yeah so that's here the partial fraction expansion of our original h of s, then we know that these poles here, that they are generating as a digital filter of the form ck1 minus e2 b k t and then z2 minus 1 so that's our digital filter and essentially these are all first order recursive digital filters so essentially as a circuit diagram we have something like so some um, like a multiplication factor c k and then just one delay step here and then we are feeding this here back with a factor e to b k t and adding this here to it and then this is here our output so we do this with all these CKs here so we're adding this up here, I could also just do a, draw a summation node here and and so we multiply this here with, with another E2 BKT and we also generate an output here and then, then we just sum sum these up here so that's our input x of n and that's y of n so essentially so every every of this of these pools here generate as a one um, first order recursive filter and then this is added up so it's another ck here uh, index is a bit bit large, so that's our CK here. But you're getting the idea, so that every every pool here generates a structure like this here, and um, and then we just add this up. So this is more of um, theoretical interest because usually these BKs here they are complex numbers, and so therefore these are becoming complex recursive filters here and then only the output becomes real again and so from a practical point of view this um, doesn't do us any good but um, just to show how this works and then we progress after this to a more practical solution and so let's use as an as an example here h of s s divided by s minus s infinity and then s minus s infinity star so the star means here the complex conjugate and so a function like this here is essentially a resonator 
So if we draw this in terms of circuit diagrams, this is something like that. Let's do the inductor in the European, maybe the old European style. And so So this is something like I, and this is the voltage here. So we've got a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor here. And so without going into the detail, this is represented by by this function here. And so, so therefore we have a circuit equivalent here. But we don't care much about the circuit, but just about its property. So the what a circuit like this does is that so if we excite this here with the voltage here at this point, then then the impulse response here, this um, H of T, looks roughly like that. So we have a frequency F, let's call this here F0, and then we have a decay rate here. And so the decay rate is usually defined in so-called Q factor here, so that we have, if we have two humps here, so like here two peaks, then this means that the Q factor is roughly two. So this means we are getting two oscillations. Yeah, so with Q factor one, one oscillation, and and so on and so on, and so therefore, with this way, we we have defined this analog function here. And um, and so the so this S infinity here, so this this value here, this is defined by the following definitions. So the real part of S infinity is defined as minus pi F0 divided by Q and the imaginary part of S infinity is defined as 2 pi F0 square and then minus the real part of S infinity here and um, then this here bracket again and the square root out of that. It's getting a bit a bit cramped here. And this can be can be resolved into pi F zero and then four minus one over Q square and then the square root out of this here. And so that's our definition of these of this constant S infinity here. So essentially here, so we've got here our our frequency F0 in here, the quality factor here, and then this also shows up here in the imaginary part. So with that we have defined our um, oscillator circuit here. So with this we can generate oscillations. So now let's um, transform that into a digital filter. What we need to do is, if we just write this down again, so to do, so we, let's write this just now in this form here, S divided by S minus A and S minus B. So we need to do a, to do, we need to do a partial fraction expansion. So we need to expand this here in partial fractions. And um, so I'm I'm too lazy to do this by hand because there's a quite a convenient program available which is called Maxima, which is freely available. And um, this solves us these equations basically with a simple command. Yeah, so we just put this here in, so partial fraction. So that's S divided by 
another bracket s minus a multiplied by s minus b. That's a bracket from there. Okay, so and we tell that this is dependent on s. Okay, so we directly see we are getting the partial fraction out here. So if I just move it a bit here to the to the side, like there, and then we can copy this here on our sheet of paper. So then our h of s in partial fractions is b and then b minus a s minus b minus a and then b minus a and then s minus a. So I secretly didn't tell Maxima that these two constants are complex conjugates otherwise it would simplify this too much and um, would screw up or make it even more difficult to, to get to a circuit diagram. And so now we just need to substitute, so the B is our complex conjugate complex conjugate S infinity and the A is just our S infinity. So we just substitute this back here just to just to get this here written down. So then so our B and this is here our S infinity and then this is here S minus S infinity star. And then we're subtracting this here from S infinity and then this is here S infinity star minus s infinity and s minus s infinity. So let's just quickly check this. So a is s infinity and so the s we've got here, a is s, b, yeah, so this all looks looks fine. So we see that in contrast to um, FIR filter design, the whole design process is a bit more messier. So let's redraw our monster of formula here again and already sort this out into constant factors and our poles so that we directly see what needs to be transformed. So that's, uh, that's here essentially a constant factor and then this is here s minus s infinity star is a, is our is one pole and then we subtracting s infinity divided by s infinity star minus s infinity so that's again a constant factor and then this is multiplied again with our analog pole here s minus s infinity. So that's our pole. And so that obviously gives us now a direct recipe how to translate this into into our digital filter here. So where we where we say so this is a constant, this is a pole and so, so let's translate this now. So this at the beginning here stays the same because it's just a constant. And now the pole in the digital domain <coughs> turns into 1 minus E2 and then S infinity star because it's the complex conjugate here, t, and then this z2 minus 1. So that's our, that's now here our first digital pole, and then we have on the other hand here s infinity divided by s infinity star minus s infinity, the same as before, but now 
not with the complex conjugate and then here we've got here 1 over 1 minus e to s infinity t that 2 minus 1 so so now this is here our IIR filter and this is here also an IIR filter and this is here just a scaling factor which is sitting in front of the IIR filter So simple, simple as that, and um, and so we, so we know that these, that this one is here now, our IIR coefficient, and the same is here. So that's also our another IIR coefficient. So remember the negative sign, you need to be careful with that. But these are our two IRR coefficients, and these are just two scaling factors. So let's take another sheet of paper, because it's getting a bit cramped here, and just redraw our function h of z here. So with that, now we can draw a data flow diagram. We need to analyze this here a bit. So, so we have the input signal is coming in. So let's say this is our x of n, and then this is split up in two pathways. And then this here, let's say this is here our so-called amplifier, and this is multiplied by s infinity star divided by s infinity star minus s infinity. Yeah, so that's basically what this amplifier does. The other one, so that's, so this formula here is coming from here. So that's this factor here. And then we've got here the other factor, which is s infinity then s infinity star minus s infinity. So without the star in the second part. So now we've got now we've got these two pathways here. So this one is this factor. And so we've got these two pathways and now now we need to create our IIR filters. So this one here has a coefficient of um, of e to s zero star t, and this is delayed by one by one time step here. So that's a delay. So we need to introduce. Uh, first, we need to have a summation node here actually. So let's draw this like this, and then. And then we've got our delay here. So that's a summation. Okay, so this delayed signal here is, a, is fed back to, to our summation node and multiplied by this factor here. So e to s infinity star t. So remember the negative sign goes away because it's multiplied to the other side of the equation. So let's check this back um, in the video where I just multiplied this h of z against the y of z. And so, and here we are just multiplying with the not the complex value, uh, complex conjugate value. So here this is multiplied with e to 
S infinity T. So that's our other factor here. Yeah, so this this coefficient here you now is becoming a bit messy in this drawing here becomes this one. And this coefficient here becomes that one. So with that we have set up, up our data flow and um, so now what the, the last step is just by adding these two pathways together. So we could try to get our signal out here and our signal out here and then we just sum this up here. So whereas this part here is a positive pathway so and this is here negative pathway and then this is our out output here y of n. So this is now gives us a data flow diagram of our of our IRR filter using partial fraction expansion here.